So I make a lot of snarky tweets joking about Web3 and people often ask me why I hate it. And I don't really hate it. I have some serious concerns with the feasibility, but I don't hate the technology. In fact, I actually was in the crypto scene back in, I think around 2010, and I followed a lot of the technology. I think some of the stuff is really cool, but I do have some very big concerns with the whole idea of Web3. So the problem with Web3 is the fundamental idea is giving control back to the user. And that actually conflicts with security because in security, what we have learned is people make mistakes. Like people are always the weakest link. So we aim to build systems to basically protect people from themselves. And a good example is the banking system. So my bank enforces 2FA. I can't do anything about that. So it makes it quite hard for me to get fished because even if I give away my username and password, they still have to somehow get my 2FA token. Now, if they somehow do manage that, the bank has an anti-fraud detection system. It will actually detect if someone other than me logs in or someone tries to access my money and they will uh, lock down the account. And then assuming they get past that, if I notice the fraud myself, I can report it to the bank and there's a, a window of about a week, I think, where they can reverse the transaction. So there's all these layers which basically protect me from myself. But the idea of Web3 is giving control to the user. They have sayings like your keys, your coins, your keys, your NFTs. And while that is great from a freedom perspective, it is horrible from a security perspective. Because if someone gets a hold of your wallet key, then that's it. Like there's no fraud department, there's no take backs, there's no nothing, there's no intervention. Just they are going to take your whatever asset that key protected and it's over for you. And in order for Web3 to become popular, we need widespread adoption. But I regularly see people who have like really high technical knowledge and understanding of Web3 getting fished. And that's not because they're stupid. Like it's not a stupid people thing to get fished. It's really just a question of how good the phishing law is. I've seen ones where I've nearly fallen for them and I work in an industry where I see phishing all day, every day. And it is my job to protect users from getting fished. And the matter of fact is like none is perfect. Like everyone gets hacked sometime. But when you have a system where pretty much all of the security is on the end user and that person is, of course, they're going to get hacked at some point, And then that hack is not reversible. That's a huge adoption problem. Like how can we expect like our parents and our parents' parents when we can't even keep it safe for the most technically minded people there are? And I'm going to be honest, like I struggle to come up with any way of solving that because security is all about layers. We need levels above the user. And when everything is just delegated to the users like it is in Web3, it's hard to enforce any kind of like mandatory security practices. We can't say you have to have a hardware wallet to use our service because how how do you track that how do you enforce that at least when the security is on the like the server side level the organization can say well you need a 2FA key to log in and if you don't have one then your account is just simply not going to work but then when it comes to crypto stuff like hardware wallets there isn't really a way to enforce those and even if they did then it's kind of counter to like the whole capitalist nature of web3 these companies are looking to make money. They're looking to get more users, not less. So when you start complicating the security process by introducing all of these requirements, not only are you losing money, but you're actually losing users and the users will probably just go over to somewhere else that maybe doesn't necessarily care. So there is some very fundamental security problems with Web3. Now, another problem I've actually noticed is a lot of people think Web3 is just secure by default. They think somehow the technology means that it's more secure than Web 2. And as I've just explained, it's actually less secure because we don't have all these layers above the user to protect them from themselves. But people honestly believe that the technology is just secure by default. And I've seen this happen maybe three or four times in my life. The most recent of which was with IoT. When IoT or the Internet of Things, that's basically... Uh, internet enabled devices that are not computers or cell phones so things like your wi-fi thermostat or your smart microwave when this technology first came about they just disregarded everything we learned about security during 
like the desktop and the mobile era basically started fresh and they were like oh we don't need all these security lessons this tech is different um and of course obviously there weren't any iot hackers because the tech was new and they mistook a lack of people having tried hacking the thing with it being unhackable so of course they disregarded all the security they built this complete shit show of just iot stuff and then of course the hackers came along they took one look at it they figured out how to hack it and we had the biggest dumpster fire for years which we had to just constantly deal with all of these devices being hacked and using as like ddos weapons and it was just a complete nightmare and i've seen that happen with every new technology they think this time it's different this time it's secure by default and it never is absolutely it never is and the biggest mistake you can make is assuming a new technology is secure we call them security testers for a reason because they test the security so if your tech is new and it hasn't been tested then it's not secure you can't ever assume a technology is secure by default and another thing people don't really understand is the concept of attack surfaces they think oh this is a way in which web 2 got hacked but that isn't in web 3 therefore web 3 is secure but web 3 has introduced a huge new attack surface because now you have things like the 51 percent attack if you can control 50 percent of whatever is validating a blockchain you can take over that blockchain or like smart contracts smart contracts didn't exist in web 2 so now you have people developing smart contracts and the smart contracts are getting hacked and then people are learning how they got hacked and securing them but we have essentially just introduced an entire new attack surface which i'm not saying is bad we obviously need new technologies but to assume that it is secure just because no one has tried to hack it that is a huge mistake now another quite interesting dynamic with web3 is state-backed hacking now typically states use their hackers for espionage or like military operations but they don't use them for financial gain but right now you have a north korean hacking division which basically because the country is so heavily sanctioned they've decided that the best way to make money is through stealing it and they did some bank hacks of varying success and of course one of the big problems is when they do hack a bank and they steal all of that bank's money there is still periods in which sometimes it can be reversed whereas with crypto as i said earlier that doesn't exist so they've actually pivoted to focusing on cryptocurrency because they know that once they hack that exchange or that nft or that wallet that that crypto is gone for good they have it now so they've actually put a lot of money into web3 hacking which is a huge problem because as i said it's not reversible so not only do you have to deal with like the typical low-level hackers trying to fish wallets you actually have a well-funded government hacking division trying to hack exchanges and nft platforms and like big crypto wallets and it is very very hard to defend against a well-funded state hacking team and we have this idea that web3 is going to be the new big thing but i'm just trying to picture my grandpa trying to defend against a well-funded north korean hacking team trying to steal his money like nobody stands a chance and basically we have this double-edged sword in crypto whereas if you're in control of your own assets or you have the keys and own the coins then you're at the mercy of lower level hackers that can fish you or they can hack your machine or they can trick you into like just giving them money but then if you send your assets to a custodian like such as an exchange they can introduce layers above you they can introduce 2fa they can introduce anti-phishing they can introduce all sorts of things to protect you from your own errors but then that's a nice big juicy pod of cryptocurrency or nfts or whatever that people like the north korean government hacking team would love to get at so it's kind of a damned if you do damned if you don't situation where you're either deferring security to the end user or you're having these custodian platforms that are big juicy targets for hackers and in all cases the transactions are not reversible once it's gone it's gone and at some point every single person is going to get hacked now typically in web 2 when a platform is hacked usually the worst case is people lose their personal info like their their credit card numbers their addresses their names get leaked out onto the internet um, and then the credit card companies can freeze their cards and issue new ones and refund whatever was stolen so hacks are very kind of temporary in nature they might cause some pr embarrassment 
or they might have caused some like personal info leak but a lot of that stuff can be changed and we can recover from it but with crypto there's a there's a finite supply and once that crypto is stolen you're never getting it back and ultimately nothing is unhackable so while web 2 does get hacked a lot those hacks are typically less severe they have less consequences Whereas when Web3 gets hacked, you're talking about um, like thousands of people losing access to their assets permanently. So even if we do secure Web3 more than Web2, we still have to deal with the fact that when a hack does happen, it's catastrophic. You're talking about like irreversible loss of like people's entire funds. And a lot of the security actually comes from governance. Like the government can say, hey, you have to have 2FA for this, or you have to go through the certain compliance steps. And the whole point of Web3 is there is no governments, it's decentralized. So having a system that lacks governance and anyone can just do whatever they want is actually pretty much contrary to what we need for security because security needs strict regulations. It needs all of these rules. It needs all of these levels of control. And maybe there is someone smart enough to solve Web3 security, but right now I don't see it happening. I don't see us making really any progress. I think we're slightly securing things better, but ultimately they're still going to get hacked. There's still going to be big breaches. People are still going to lose their money. People are going to lose their wallets, their NFTs. And I don't see any of that changing anytime soon. But of course, I'm not saying give up. I'm basically saying that personally, I do not see a future of Web3 unless this problem is somehow solved. 